Hey guys, so in this video we want to have a look at solving systems of linear equations using matrices. So I've got here, I've got these two equations and we've said before that if we take the equations we can actually write them out using matrices. So what we said was that if we have these two equations we can write it using these two matrices and they're going to equal this matrix here on the right. So we said that when we have uh, say a 5 and a 6 and a 2 and a 3 what we can do is we can take the coefficients which are these things here so the 5, the 6, the 2 and the 3 and we can put them into this first matrix here just going crosswards so we can say our 5 goes in the top left then we put our 6 in the top right and we have 2 in our bottom left and our 3 in our bottom right so we said we could do this and then we could take our coefficients our variable, sorry, so we have this x and this y, and we can then put those in here. And because they're the same in both equations, we can take our x, and we can take our y, we can put them there, and then we can set them equal to these other two numbers here. So our 30 and our 15. And that's what we said uh, we would do when we were setting up a system of linear equations. But what we want to do is we want to solve this for x and y. So we want to find what x and y are and we, we could do it you know, using this and we could take one away from the other or do some other complex and tricky things in order to get an answer here but we just want to use this vector mul multiplication to actually get a solution. So it turns out to be a lot easier than it's going to look um, but what we can do here is we're going to use a few of the skills which we've learned before. So we're going to use the determinant of the matrix. So we're going to call this matrix matrix A. What we can do is if we have matrix A multiplied by this matrix X and Y equals say these numbers here and we want to find what these uh, two numbers here are uh, for X and Y so we want to find x, we don't know that, and we don't know what y is. What we can do is we can take the inverse of this. If we have a times by this matrix here equals to, say, 30 and 15, what we can do is we can multiply both sides by the inverse of a. So we've got a, and you can look at this as being a to the power of 1. We can multiply this by a to the power of, say, negative 1 and we get these two are going to cancel out. We then multiply this side over here by a to the power of negative one. So we multiply both our sides by this negative one. It'll cancel out on this side. So our a's will cancel out. And we're going to get left with our x and y variables are equal to this inverse matrix times by 30 and 15 matrix. So I guess the best place to start with that is obviously we need to find the inverse and that's kind of the, the crux of this entire question is how do we actually find the inverse and then multiply it across. So we've looked at finding the inverse of this matrix before. So we've got the numbers 5, 6, 2 and 3. So when we are doing this matrix we know that the first thing we want to do is we want to have our x and our y variables, and we're going to set these to our a inverse multiplied by uh, this matrix which we had here, which was 30 and 15. So we need to find the inverse of this a matrix. So I'm going to leave our a matrix here, and I'm going to clear off some of this other stuff here so that we can have a look at finding the inverse of this matrix. So what we do is we say, to find the inverse, we took 1 divided by the determinant of A, and we multiplied it by this resulting matrix here. And in this resulting matrix, we said what we did was we took our matrix A, and this is going to give us A negative 1. So we took our matrix here, and we swapped the diagonal terms, so 3 went from being in the bottom right to being in the top left and 5 went from being in the top left to being in the bottom right and then 6 
our other two terms, so our two terms here, we just made them negative. So our 6 goes to being negative 6, and our 2 goes to being negative 2. So we're going to get our matrix as determinant of A multiplied by this. So I guess the next thing we really need to work out is going to be the determinant of A. So we said that the determinant of A was equal to this notion of A times D minus B times by C. So if this isn't familiar, check out the video on the determinant and it, it should all be quite clear. And just matching up the colors, we know that this is term A and this is term D. So we're going to have 5 times by 3 and we're going to subtract 6 times by 2. So there we've got 6 multiplied by 2. So if we actually work that through, we're going to find the determinant of A is going to be 5 times 3, which is 15, minus 6 times 2, which is 12. So our determin determinant is going to be 3. So we can come down and we can kind of replace that here in our formula. And we can say that if we just replace the determinant everywhere where it's, it is there, we can say it's going to be 1 on 3 multiplied by this matrix is going to be our inverse matrix. So, what we want to do next, and I'll erase some more stuff here, is we said if we want to find solutions to our x and y variables up here, we've got this matrix here, all this term is equal to a negative 1. And in our formula up here, we're looking at a negative 1 multiplied by this 30 and this 15. And if we do that correctly, that's going to give our solutions for these x and these y variables. So the reason I haven't multiplied through this constant into the matrix is just so that it makes it simpler when we're trying to solve for our x and y variables here. But what we can do now is we're interested in finding our x and y, so what we need to do is we can just multiply everything straight across. So if we want to do that, we need to check to see if these matrices can be multiplied first. So we said in order for matrices to be multiplied, we needed to have this matching order. And we said for a matrix, the order was this row by column notion, that a matrix has some number of rows and some number of columns. So this matrix here has two rows, so it's going to be rows first, two, and it's got two columns, one, two. So it's got two rows and two columns. This matrix here has one, two rows, and it's got one column. So we said that we had, we needed these middle two numbers to be the same in order to multiply them, so they are, and the resulting matrix we're going to get is determined by these two numbers here on the outside. So if we multiply these two matrices here together, we're going to get a 2 by 1 matrix. So a 2 by 1 matrix just looks like a 2 row, 1, 2, and 1 column. And if you guys notice, that is exactly the same as our x and y. So by the end of this, we should have x and y are equal to these two numbers here. And whatever these numbers are, which we find, will be our solutions to x and y. So what we want to do next is we want to just complete this multiplication. So we've got our x and our y. Um, sorry, that x is just a little bit out of that bracket. Our x and our y is equal to 1 on 3, and then we're going to complete this multi matrix multiplication. So this is going to simplify down, and it's going to give us a um, 2 by 1 matrix. And the way we, we've looked at matrix multiplication before is we said we had this 3 and we multiplied it by 30. So we had our first term in our first row, so here. Multiplied it by our first term in our second row, so here. So we have our 3 multiplied by 30. So we have 3 times 30. And then we add to that. So we add to that our second term in our first row multiplied by our second row term in the first column of our next matrix. So we're going to add negative 6 multiplied by 15. 
So that's going to be our first solution to the matrix. And then we said we just multiply the next term, so we've got negative 2 times 30 times by 30, and then we said we add to that, it's going to be 5 times positive 15. So then we're going to add 5 times positive 15, just like that. So what we're going to see, and I'm going to try and make us some more room here, is that after we finish multiplying these matrices across, what we can do now is we can just simplify these down. So we've got 3 times by 30, which is 90, plus negative 6 times by 15, which is negative 90. So for our first term, we're going to have 90 minus 90, and that's going to be 0 in our matrix. And for our next term, we've got two, negative 2 times by 30, which is negative 60, plus 5 times 15, which is 75. So we've got seven, negative 60 plus 75, which can be 75 minus 60, which is equal to 15. So this is what we get uh, as a result of that matrix. And don't forget, we've, got a, we've still got this multiplied by 1 third out the front. So we still have to multiply the whole matrix by 1 third. So if we do that, we can say 1 third of 0 is still going to be 0. And then we have a third of 15 is going to be 5. So what we've done there is we've just used matrix multiplication and we've ended up with a negative 1 multiplied by a solution matrix and it's come out to give us these, this here. After we've multiplied all this across, it's come out to be this. So we're basically saying our x and our y, we can get rid of everything in the middle here, so we can get rid of all this. And we can say that our x and our y are equal to this 0 and 5, respectively. So x and, zero and y equals 0. So what we can say is that our x is equal to 0, and our y is equal to not 0, our y is equal to 5. So that's how we solve simultaneous equations using matrices. It takes a couple of times to get your head around it, um, but it really is just looking at everything we've looked at, that determinant, the matrix multiplication, and taking the inverse. So I'll put out some examples for you guys to have a go at, and I hope that helps. I look forward to seeing you for the next video. Thanks.